There we go. Good, good morning, everyone, and uh, good afternoon to those in, in North America. I really appreciate your time in joining us today. This is, in fact, the first uh, get-together of our Minimum Viable Product Marketing Group uh, to have a think about how we're going to uh, progress the, the, the marketing agenda for the launch of the OERU first year of study, which is now reaching its finalization and uh, moving into uh, you know, the launch cycle, so to speak. So um, given that we're a small group, I thought perhaps we uh, could go with a round of short introductions. And what I'll do is I'll just work according to the order I have it on my list here on the screen. Um, and the first I have on my list is Erin here, who's uh, here with us in New Zealand. Yes. So um, I'm Erin. I am uh, in Dunedin, which is... I guess 15 minutes drive from Mosgiel, so quite close to Wayne. And um, my history is in tertiary education and marketing. So right now I work at New Zealand Media and Entertainment as a marketing consultant. And uh, we do basically, we're basically a giant agency who um, owns a lot of media properties as well. Um, yeah, what else would you like to know? Oh no, that's perfect. And Erin, uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, and thanks for joining us. Uh, next on the list, uh, Joanne across the Atlantic in uh, Surrey, uh, British Columbia. Hi, I'm Joanne Saunders. I'm the Executive Director of Marketing and Recruitment here at KPU, Kwantlen Polytechnic University. Uh, we have four campuses um, in the area. Uh, soon to be five, and um, I'm really looking forward to getting more involved in this group. Thank you very much, Joanne, and really appreciate your time. Um, um, Tarzan, I think it's Mark. Sorry, I, I don't recall your first name. You just need to uh, unmute your mic. On the bottom of your screen, there you, there's a switch where you can toggle your mic on and off. Hello. Hi, I'm Matthew. Matthew, my apologies, Matthew. I just couldn't remember your first name there. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Matthew. So uh, Matt is my colleague here. We're both at Thompson Rivers University in Kamloops. So we're about four hours from Vancouver in British Columbia. And I'm the manager of communications and social media here. And I actually used to work for our online division, Open Learning. So I've been sort of working on and off on OERU projects here and there for the last couple of years. So I'm excited to be involved as we get ready to uh, get serious about marketing this. Cool. And, 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 and Matthew? You're Sorry. Your... Sorry, I'm the manager of web strategy. So. Okay. Uh, and I, I did not work for Open Learning before, so this OERU thing is new to me. So it's it's exciting, and I'm looking forward to learning about what you guys are doing. F fair enough, and uh, again, uh, really appreciate your time. Um, you know, looking by the membership of this group, I think we've got a hostile takeover bit from Canada, uh, <laughs> but, that, <laughs> but but that's all good. Um, so th this is the first meeting of our group. But let me just start a screen share here. Uh, and if, if this is your, your sort of first uh, OER, your online meeting, just um, two, two housekeeping uh, requests. One is if you're not speaking, uh, to mute, uh, mute your microphone just to avoid any feedback loops. Uh, the challenge, of course, then is to remember to unmute yourself if you want to contribute. <laughs> Uh, the second practice we have with our open meetings is if we are, uh, when we're discussing any decisions, our practice of uh, silence means assent. So if we don't get anybody contributing to a decision discussion, we assume that you all agree with, with what's you know, on the table. But of course, we welcome contributions for everyone. It's just a, a good way of being able to you know, run these meetings virtually. Um, what I thought I would do is just by way of setting a little bit of background context, and I do apologize because uh, I know one or two of you do have a detailed knowledge of the OERU, but I thought I'd just uh, work through just a couple of touch points uh, of where we are at and how the OERU works, uh, because I think that context is extremely important when thinking around the marketing issues. 
And the other point which I must emphasize, and if you pardon me, pardon me for my candor, I totally suck at marketing. I have no expertise whatsoever in this, this discipline. And so we are very, very grateful for your generous gift of knowledge in you know, helping us think through uh, the, the marketing strategies. So what I did here is I put together a couple of slides. Uh, and this won't be dead by PowerPoint by any means, uh, but just a couple of background uh, notes and how the OERU works. I think the most important aspect from the perspective of the foundation is that we are a philanthropic uh, collaboration. Um, from the OER Foundation's perspective, who coordinates the OERU, we do not generate any revenue whatsoever from student-facing services. And, and that's by design. Um, our, our intention is not to compete with any of our partner institutions. In fact, uh, we generate our revenue from membership fees from our partners. So I, mean, I think it's important to put that out there. Um, we are not in any way trying to compete with any sort of revenue, gen revenue generation opportunities our individual partner institutions may have in, in, in this mix. And um, basically how the OERU works, uh, we assemble, uh, online courses based entirely on OER and open access materials so that learners who do not have the money to be able to afford to study at a traditional institution would be able to access these courses at no cost. So, I mean, already there you can see the, the, the market that we are, are striving uh, or, or targeting are learners who do not currently come to your institutions. I and mean, I think that's an important part of the mix as well. Um, our partner institutions uh, may opt in to provide assessment services, which are done on a fee-for-service basis. That may be just cost recovery, or it could be for profit by our individual institutions uh, or partner institutions. That is a decision that is taken internally uh, you know, at our partner institutions. And then we've designed a system of transnational credit transfer for uh, two designated qualifications for the launch of the OERU first year of study. Um, just one or two uh, points about the, the business of OPEN. Uh, as I mentioned initially, we are building a parallel learning universe. In other words, uh, we we targeting at, in the markets that our institutions are not currently serving for whatever reason. Um, and I think that's very, very important when we start thinking about um, you know, a marketing strategy for the OERU. Uh, the OERU has also done quite a bit of work. Uh, we've had two uh, regional consultations, one here in Oceania and another in North America to develop an open business model. And we've developed a rather comprehensive business model. And I'm not going to go into the detail here. What I'll do is I'll share that link. Um, and the thinking behind the business model is, you know, partner institutions will decide the areas that they want to focus in, focus on. Um, so this is a bit of a cafeteria kind of approach where institutions see what is the best fit for their own purposes. Um, from our input evaluation survey, we know that our network is clustered into two main groupings. Uh, partners that are on board purely for the philanthropic reasons of widening access to affordable education. But there's another cluster within our grouping, um, institutions that are seeking to generate new revenue streams uh, through their engagement in OERU. And the power of this open model is that, um, I mean, those two agendas are not mutually exclusive. So just by way of background there, we're now reaching the point where we are moving forward with the launch of a first year of study. We have two exit qualifications that are on the table. Uh, the, one, the first one is the Certificate of Higher Education in Business uh, that will be conferred by uh, the University of Highlands and Islands in Scotland. Uh, basically, there are uh, three modules, core courses, with 60 uh, European credits, uh, which is about 600 notional learning hours of study, and a number of optional courses. 60 credits are required. Um, the... the the green ticks there indicate that the courses that are already completed, they can be launched tomorrow. Um, the two with the progress bars, they are 75% complete and will be completed 
by the international partners meeting in October and we'll have 94 credits available there for the requirement of 60 credits so learners will have some choice. Um, the other qualification of course is the certificate of general studies that will be conferred by Thompson Rivers University. Uh, the uh, certificate of general studies at TRU has a residency requirement of six North American credits or uh, that would equate to 30, see also uh, three university credits would be so, uh, 40, 40, 120, 240 notional learning hours. Uh, these different credit systems are, are quite interesting. This is why we've assembled all our courses as micro courses. But basically, uh, TRU has completed and is uh, nearing completion of the two courses they have available for the local residency requirement. And we have a number of arts courses that would be available for credit transfer, the majority of which have been completed and are ready. There will be 26 credits available in arts. But of course, uh, there are a number of business courses uh, from the Certificate of Business that would also potentially qualify for the Certificate of General Studies. So we, uh, we are expecting uh, a larger number of credits to be available uh, as options with the Certificate of General Studies. Um, again, just the OVRU model is designed to work within existing institutional policies uh, around credit transfer and our partner, partners retain decision-making autonomy over all aspects of this model. But just by way of update, uh, we have uh, uh, collaborated with the partners that are actively engaged uh, in the first year of study, either through the offering assessment services for transcript credit or conferring the two exit qualifications to develop the credit transfer contract. And this contract has been reviewed and uh, approved by the respective registrars at the active partners. I just want to point out that that credit transfer uh, contract was based on the credit transfer guidelines that we developed and were approved at the 2015 partners meeting. So just by way of background, I also want to uh, announce our partnership with EduBits, which is a micro-credentialing initiative uh, that is led here locally by Otago Polytechnic. Uh, recently, our New Zealand Minister of Tertiary Education Skills and Employment uh, announced three prototypes uh, to examine micro-credentialing he uh, here within New Zealand, and the EduBits OVRU partnership is one of those official pilots uh, that uh, the, the, the minister announced. So basically how that will work is the, the fact that we've assembled all OVRU courses as micro courses um, that make up the full courses. So for example, the full course introduction to project management is made up from four micro courses. Learners can request assessment services uh, from the partners that offer assessment services and earn a, 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 a digital certificate or dig, a micro credential. And once learners have achieved the set of uh, micro credentials that are associated with the full course, uh, in this particular example, the Targa Polytechnic will be able to issue transcript credit that would be recognized by the University of Highlands and Islands towards the Certificate of Higher Education Business. So, I mean, this is quite an, uh, an interesting development to the best of my knowledge. We are the only uh, OER international collaboration that is working with micro credentials that lead to formal academic credit. Uh, we have recently announced a, a phased launch of the OERU first year of study, which is consistent with the decision of the Council of CEOs meeting in 2016, uh, and that is with our launch to follow realistic but conservative targets as we build brand awareness and collect data around how the, you know, the, the model is playing out. Uh, so phase one will be the launch of the, uh, Learning in a Digital Age, uh, which is a course uh, comprising four micro courses that focuses on building learning and digital literacies for the 21st century. Um, the phase two courses we selected, we uh, uh, tried to focus on courses that would likely have high appeal uh, in the initial phases and the three courses there you'll see them principles of management introduction to entrepreneurship and introduction to project management and of course the link with project management is also the Institute's 
or, or the International Institute of Project Management actually will recognize ours uh, towards their certifications for online learning. So that's just an interesting um, example to be working with there. And then phases three and beyond, we will actually discuss the launch schedule at the International Partners Meeting in October. The other, uh, just drawing on our own experience from running a number of prototypes in these environments, we found that uh, when running any of our cohort-based courses, a lead-up time of between six to eight weeks is advised in terms of you know getting the marketing out there and knowledge out there that these courses will run. So in terms of the marketing plans that we're working with, um, it will be an eight-week lead time from the point that we you know officially decide here's the launch date. And I expect that decision to be taken at the partners meeting. Uh, and it's quite possible that our, uh, the first micro course would run before the end of this calendar year. Um, part of the, one of the key aspects that we have to make sure, sure of is that all the boxes have been checked for credit transfer and contract, uh, credit transfer contracts uh, to ensure that learners are guaranteed an exit qualification. Um, we've been we've been quite conservative at the OERU, unlike uh, uh, the neighbours, uh, your neighbours a little south of your border there in Canada, who uh, you know like to market things before they're ready. Um, we, we've erred on the side of conservatism uh, in in our neck of the woods. So um, these are just acknowledges of the images that I've used. So let me just leave that there. Just by way of brief introduction. So let me just open up the floor uh, to confirm if there are any questions from your side relating to the model, and, and then we can start you know, having a look at some of the marketing-related uh, uh, stuff on the table. I just have one uh, question around the launch schedule. So the phase launch schedule is uh, you have phase one, two, and three, just to clarify, these are around launching the courses, not the marketing of the courses? So the, think, the thinking is whatever marketing uh, we do put in place. Um, so there are two aspects to the marketing here. And one is how you get information out to learners that there are these free courses available, right? The second aspect of the marketing is uh, we have on the back end, so. Uh, I haven't gone into the technologies we're using for delivering these courses. They're designed and assembled as independent study courses uh, published on a public website. Um, and, but part of our technology infrastructure that we use on, a, on the back end is a piece of open source marketing automation software called Maltec. And what we do is we actually use the marketing automation software to send out the email instructions for each of the sessions in the individual courses. Um, because it's, you know, it's, it's a way in which we can automate that process for learners who opt in. But the interesting thing with the cohort-based courses is we would know at the point that learners are uh, potentially thinking about assessment services. At that point, we would be able to inject marketing collateral from our partner institutions that are offering assessment services on a fee-for-service basis. So in terms of schedule, there are two components. One is figuring out how do we get the, you know, the information out to, to learners that these courses are available. But then the second component is you know, the partners who are offering assessment services and the marketing collateral that we are able to inject uh, through the marketing automation we have. So, um, but, you know, once, you know, once we get an, uh, an idea of a, a launch date, I mean, I think we will re realistically take a decision that we uh, will not go to market uh, without the eight-week lead time in order just to, you know, get a bit of marketing running. But that said, as I pointed out, we're aiming, you know, we're aiming to chase conservative targets initially, um, you know, just to, you know, a learn-by-doing approach before we really start moving forward. I mean, my own thinking, and again, given I'm not a marketing expert, but I think it, particularly in the early phases is because we're international, I mean, we potentially could go anywhere in the world, but to possibly focus on you know two or three countries 
uh, because I mean I do think there are different challenges in different markets, and 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 you know to you know to keep these things within you know achievable goals. So I'm not sure that answers your question. Uh, it does. Yes, I the marketing automation software is um, was an interesting component. I didn't know about that, so that helps. Yeah. So we've actually, I mean, I could go in and show you a demo, but I'm sure you're quite familiar with these marketing automation tools. It's basically assemble an email campaign uh, that is either date bound or it has relative dates and the learners will, you know, be getting you know, information about the courses, but we will then be able to inject uh, the marketing collateral for our partners. The other piece in this puzzle, which I think is useful information, I think I mentioned it in some of the documentation. As a nonprofit uh, organization, we actually get a grant from, from Google uh, and we qualify for uh, AdWords to the value of 10,000 US per month. So, I mean, that's a, a budget of 120,000 US dollars worth of AdWords we would be able to utilize and and with a phase launch schedule we would know which courses are coming up and then obviously the partners that are offering assessment services for those courses at those times would then benefit from the uh adwords com adwords campaign uh campaigns yeah Any other questions? And, and that, sorry, that 120,000, I'm assuming that's worldwide. Yes, it is. Uh, from, from memory, yes, I believe it is worldwide. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'll take silence to mean a cent. Um, what I also thought would be useful is just to give you a bit of a rundown of the uh, marketing collateral we, we do have. Now, the history behind this, we, uh, one of our major donors is the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. And um, every year they uh, s select uh, a number of their grantees for what are known, are, are known as capacity development grants. And uh, about 18 months ago, we, uh, well, two years ago, we... Uh, Hewlett approached us and said, hey, would you be interested in a, a capacity development grant? And uh, we said, oh, well, of course, uh, one of the areas we are very weak in um, is, is marketing. And they gave us a small grant to uh, employ a professional marketing uh, consultant to assist us with the development of some marketing collateral. And so that's where the, this, uh, this marketing collateral comes from. And the brief that we gave the... the uh, the marketing professional was to design this collateral in ways that could easily be rebranded re by any partner institutions that wanted to reuse that collateral. So um, th th this marketing copy, this marketing copy, is all openly licensed. So which means is uh, you know if if it's of any use to anybody within the network, they are, would be free to be able to change, adapt, modify uh, those resources uh, as as appropriate. So the bits and pieces we've got, and uh, you know, given that we are not really experts in this field, uh, we assembled uh, a bunch of things. One is this uh, student marketing video. I mean, you can, can go and have a look at it. Uh, we've already had uh, two partners who have uh, branded the video themselves. Uh, the, the local branding in, uh, involves a couple of things. Uh, uh, the logo is a, uh, a channel bug throughout the video. The uh, screenshots of the course materials can be replaced with the actual courses that our partners are offering. Uh, the voiceovers can be changed uh, for local accents, for example. Uh, and, and, and those kinds of customizations uh, can easily be done. And at uh, the Targa Polytechnic and the University of Southern Queensland have... Uh, develop local branded versions of that student video. The other uh, uh, document that we developed was this uh, learner rack card. So the thinking behind the rack card was, you know, given our markets are, are also likely to be 
in developing societies was to you know have print resources that would be easy for institutions to replicate and be able to hand out so some of the thinking here was for you know institutions who for whatever reason have to turn away a learner because they can't accommodate them maybe the clashes in the timetable or you know the, the, the learner is not sure of where the university study is for them um, every institution has learners that you know don't you know, join them or, or for whatever reason. And so this was kind of, you know, designed, you know, with that in mind. Uh, so we had these records available. I mean, they can, you know, be branded uh, for, for local institutions in any way. The copy is all openly licensed. And so the thinking here was, I mean, this is potentially a way for partners who are working in this space to establish that relationship with the uh, future client. Uh, or, you know, um, that might in, at a future date decide, oh, okay, this university stuff is actually not that hard for me. Uh, you know, I will transfer to full-time study at the institution. So that was one of the bits and pieces we had. Um, what we also developed, and this might seem trivial, but this was actually, we've been running open online courses for the last decade. And one of the simple things that has helped us in getting the word out was um, generating these print-based posters that local institutions would be able to print out, whether they uh, churches or uh, community hubs or libraries or you know organizations out in the community that are serving local communities would be able to print these posters and put them on the notice boards. And so we had these masters of, you know, posters for micro courses that, you know, can be printed. We've also found that uh, with the audiences that we've been working with, having marketing, marketing collateral that is available as a PDF attachment uh, makes it easier for people to be able to forward and share the news with others. So that was some of the thinking behind why we created these, po uh, these posters. So those are available in open editable formats. Um, we've also got for the micro course uh, posters. So, in terms of the existing collateral we've got, uh, are, are there any questions? If not, then I can move on to some of the other bits and pieces we've got. Uh, we've got. Uh, the consultant we used to help us with this collateral, I, I asked him to uh, develop a set of uh, marketing guidelines, which is really just a draft document, uh, which is a bit of a brainstorm, if you, if you will, for ideas in terms of how individual partner institutions might be able to use the collateral we have. So, I mean, one of the things that would be extremely useful is if our marketing professionals, uh, you know, could have a look at those guidelines and 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 see well you know and you know and, and give you know and give us feedback on on those guidelines um, you know are they useful are the other things that need to you know need to be changed so I mean that's one of the things where which would be extremely helpful to us is you know just getting you know a bit of feedback on uh, these guidelines so that is something we could potentially have a look at. Um, we have a, a dedicated YouTube channel. One of the, as being being a nonprofit, we do get the, all the advantages of uh, you, uh, the YouTube uh, channels. Uh, so that we have, I've already mentioned the uh, the grant we get from Google AdWords. Um, I've already talked about our marketing automation engine on the back end, uh, Maltech. Um, I've, I've got a link there to you know. Some of them are press releases that are more professionally prepared. Uh, lots of our comms that are out there, given our non-profit nature, uh, aren't that professional, but there, there is a bunch of copy that is there uh, historically. We do have a number of existing channels that we operate. Um, through our mouth, this number would need to be updated. It will be a bit higher than that, but we have... Uh, uh, 2,000 plus newsletter subscribers uh, that signed up for, you know, getting updates on OERU. Um, Wiki Educator is a, a top 100k 
website on Alexa, so it gets quite a bit of traffic. Um, one of the things we are able to do with Wiki Educator is deploy a site banner. So one of the things we could be thinking about is when we actually launch, you know, phase one of the first year of study, we can enable that site banner because there's a very strong relationship between OERU and Wiki Educator. Um, of course, the folk that have uh, you know large social media followings. Um, and again, the opportunities for how our partner institutions actually integrate OERU into their own corporate websites. And we have a couple of examples uh, of that as well. So that's in terms of the comms channels we have at the moment. Um, my thinking around how to progress this, uh, this work would be to uh, just have a, 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 an open discussion about, you know, how, I mean, what would a marketing plan look like? I mean, how would we go forward and just, you know, get a couple of draft ideas on the table, which could then be discussed at more detail at the partners meeting face to face. My thinking is, is to have a breakout group uh, that runs throughout the, the partners meeting, actually looking at components of the, you know, the OERU marketing plan. And true to our philosophy, everything we do is done openly and transparently. So all our partners would be able to see that. And you know, even folk that aren't at the meeting uh, would be able to contribute uh, either during the meeting, because we do stream the meetings, or asynchronously uh, as we move forward. So it's really about having a think at what, of what a marketing plan would look like uh, for what we're trying to achieve. I received a document from, because I reached out to a couple of the partners uh, who I know um, have a strong relationship with OERU. And one of the folk uh, that got back to me was a BC campus. And they shared, I had permission to share this uh, with the group and I'll, I'll share a link after. But this is kind of the marketing strategy that they put together for the Open Textbook Initiative um, around the key messages, uh, and you know, breaking down, you know, the target audiences. Uh, there should be a, you know, this this kind of thing. Looking at the audience, you know, what the concerns are, the primary communication vehicle. But to be honest, I have no background in this space, and I wouldn't even know what headings to give a document like this. So uh, I realize this is for a, do a totally different purpose, but I'm. I'm putting it out there, I'm asking you, is, is this a worthwhile type of thing to be developing for us to think about a marketing and comms strategy for the first year of study? Or you know, is there, are there other approaches? I, I'm really in your hands in terms of you know, what the next steps would be and you know, what we should be doing. So let me leave it there. I've been uh, talking enough. I, uh, it would be a good opportunity for you to help guide us and share your thoughts and ideas um, around you know, what the next steps would be. I think a document like that is a really good idea, Wayne. I think we should have some written down plans which identify the key messages and the places, our targets for where we want to start to spread our message. Uh, even in the conversation today, there have been a, a few sort of themes that you've touched on. There's been uh, philanthropy, there's been uh, the benefits to learners, there's the, um, the more transactional elements to it and how students actually access this and get credit and will work towards a credential. So I think sort of putting it into a marketing brief will give it some structure and that will give us something to hammer out. Maybe that's something we could even start to draft before the meeting. And then those points could be finalized when we're all sitting down in person. Yeah, Lindsay, I think that's an excellent idea. I mean, what, one, one of the things, I mean, we could just open up a Google Doc or something and you know, start draft, drafting uh, a marketing brief. I suppose that's the official terminology of a document like that, right? Uh, we call it a marketing brief, yeah. Okay. So um, and maybe just thrash out a draft uh, together. I mean, to be honest, I don't even know what, what headings to start with. 
So any help <laughs> that you guys can provide would, would, would be great. So that's one action item we can certainly progress. And that would be a great document for the folk at the meeting to start getting the, uh, the heads into and start you know, thinking through. Yeah. And thank you very much for that. Of course. Um, I definitely support the creation of an initial marketing document. And I think um, throughout this process, I've realized that obviously this is a highly credible organization. I think um, what we're also up against is the fact that there are a lot of online organizations who say, you know, attain a certificate or a, I don't know, an Adams certificate in this or um, whatever specific certificate they allocate themselves. And I think it's uh, almost watered down how people see some online platforms. So I think, um, and what you're doing really well is being mindful of having that really solid um, brand voice, really solid creative, really consistent professional messaging. I think that initial marketing document that goes through what are our company values, what is our what are our brand guidelines, how is this able to be used by partner institutes. I think that's absolutely crucial to maintain that integrity of this course. Um, so I think that would be something that would be very, very good to weave through it, to know what is our voice, who are we, and how um, how do we maintain integrity when we have so many external stakeholders and partners also speaking our voice for us? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's a that's a very important point, uh, Aaron. I mean, I think there's one thing that characterises the OVRU is has been the rigour of our planning. Um, we have really spent a a lot of time thinking this model through, because you know the whole quality assurance piece and the credibility of our partner organizations is mission critical. Um, there's not a single partner here on board that would want to have their credentialing status uh, tarnished in any way through um, shoddy practices uh, at OERU. So quality has been a, a driving foundation of, you know, of our work to date. Um, yeah, I can, I can see the importance uh, you know, of that in our messaging. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Just the minute any sort of brand voice gets disjointed, and it can happen so easily when other people have access to, you know, promoting your whatever collateral you allow them to use. Um, it just, yeah, it really takes away from that credibility. And and you're right, this process has been incredibly vigilant, and you've maintained that uh, that authority and and credibility the whole time. The other thing would be. Um, it would be great to do an ambassador drive. So any particular students who have graduated with a course who can um, who can own their voice around it and say, you know, I was in this particular situation. I didn't think this was available to me. I um, I undertook study through OERU and this is my tangible outcome. I think that would be incredibly powerful. So keeping those ambassador opportunities in mind would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Nodding my head, another excellent point. Thanks, Erin. Other thoughts? Uh, one of the, the, the quick, because I, I've been looking at the, uh, the AdWords stuff, and obviously the selection of search terms is quite, quite important, both in terms of cost of AdWords, but also in terms of reaching the, the appropriate audiences. And to be honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> um, because, you know, as a charity, one of our big challenges is we don't have money. I mean, how does one go about um, sort of the AdWord campaigns identifying, you know, what, what, the, what one would use as search terms? I mean, and, and how would we structure that? Is, is that something? Because one of the very interesting dynamics within the OERU and I'm, and and I'm quite conscious of this. I mean, we've, we've kind of got the central entity, which is the philanthropic OERU, which has got a forward-facing uh, student uh, frontage, right? Um, but we're made up of autonomous institutions. And the OER, I mean, one of our key philosophies at the OERU is that our partners retain decision-making autonomy over all aspects of this model. And similarly, I, I, I mean, our partners would be competing 
in markets themselves, right? I mean, we have TOU and we've got KPU. I'm, I would imagine that, you know, I'm not, I don't even know, there, might, there may not be competition, but maybe there is competition. And I think we need to be conscious, you know, of that as well. I mean, from our perspective, we don't want to interfere in the individual marketing campaigns or identity of our partner institutions. Um, and, but it is, um, and, and we will, uh, you know, if KPU or TLU has a course that they're offering assessment services for, we will introduce your marketing credential, uh, your marketing collateral into that process if you wanted to. Um, so um, I, I think we also need to be cognizant of those healthy professional tensions, so to speak. Um, and, you know, marketing is one of those areas. So I just want to get that out there. Uh, we, we, we don't want to interfere with your your marketing and all, but to think clearly about where the areas where it's kind of a co-opetition model, right? And where are the areas where it pays for us to collaborate uh, so that our own marketing initiatives in these spaces are more successful? Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, and Wayne, thanks for bringing that up because are we in competition with TRU? Yeah, everyone's in competition, I think, nowadays. So um, being cognizant of the fact that, um, yes, we're all in this together, but we also have our day-to-day -day business um, yep. for our uh, campuses. Yep. So um, getting back to your question on the AdWords, again, this, I think this is a perfect example of we're all in this together. Um, if we have, you know, if the budget is $10,000 a month, um, I, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but I think most institutions will have um, a digital marketing manager or someone, social media manager, someone like that, um, who deals with AdWords on a daily basis. So, you know, again, it's one person's not going to do it all. It's kind of the same as working on our marketing creative brief it will be all part of it how you know how we are going to work together um adwords is just it's going to be a piece of that that marketing uh plan moving forward so yeah i, I guess know, what I'm going to say is you know everyone working together and using our expertise from you know our roles um, understanding that we're promoting um oeru and everyone in this process but in our other positions in our universities, um, you know, we're we're promoting it maybe a little bit differently. Sure, yeah, no, that that makes perfect sense. And one of the other things that I've kind of been thinking of in the back of my mind, particularly during the phased launch schedule, I mean, we would know, for example, you know, maybe next week May, uh, Quantum Polytechnics Introduction to Psychology course is the one which you know you have contributed to the network will be running. And so the AdWords for that particular month, it, you know, because it's within, because we've had fixed dates and times, could really be KPU generated stuff. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, because we know there are no other courses running at that, at that time. And similarly, when the TRU courses are, are, are going to be running as cohort based initiatives, that we then allocate that budget because there's no competing uh, course, uh, they all, there won't be competing courses. So basically, what I'm saying is I'm happy to have, the, you know, that budget allocation, you know, directly serving our partners at the times, you know, that line up with the schedule, uh, because we would know what the schedule is, particularly during the early phases, um, and so that we could uh, ring fence um, that grant budget for the particular partners that have active services in, uh, related to those specific courses. Right. I think once the marketing brief comes together, we may come across some additional ideas as well. Uh, one thing that occurred to me, you had a point in your document about how this provides a foundation for learning. This is really sort of learner's first year. Um, there is some similar messaging out there now around MOOCs and free open online courses 
we are sort of a, a more sophisticated step in that, I think, in that people can go on to get a, a credential. So maybe, um, and I'm really just brainstorming at this point, but maybe we look at possibilities at um, targeting keywords around MOOCs or open courses that um, doesn't put those keywords in conflict with schools who may have AdWord campaigns for their own psychology course or English course. Um, and yep, whether yep. that will work out, that may sort of become, we may see that that's an opportunity once the, the brief is finalized, but there may yeah. be ways around focusing those Google campaigns on brand awareness rather than uh, particular courses and course enrollments. Yeah, and, and, and that's a very good point, Lindsay. I mean, for better or worse, um, particularly during the formative phases of the OERU, we took a conscious decision not to be associated with the MOOCs um, because there was always a high risk of the, the, the negative, you know, um, so particularly if the, the news media started associating what we're doing at OERU as another one of these commercial MOOC startups because it's not what we are. Yeah. Um, but at, at the same token, uh, by the same token, I mean, I think there's value in the marketing side of this because we are one of the sort of free course offer offerings that are out there. Um, but, you know, here are the differences or, you know, and, or how we pick up some of that, some of that market. But uh, initially we, we took a conscious decision because of the risks associated with, uh, the, you know, the move concept. Um, we stayed away from it, but that's not to say we shouldn't be lo looking at it in the marketing brief now, because we're in a very different place now to what we were, you know, five years ago. Um, and also, the the I, I think the the market mindset has changed as well, uh, you know, in relation to these open online courses, um, you know, possibly. So yeah, uh, uh, a, a very good, a very good point there. So it seems to me, I mean, I, I think the, I mean, I think what we're saying to each other is the, the kind of the, the next step here is to just start putting a bit of a draft together, a marketing brief, and, and, and see what we end up with. Uh, and then because that would then also, you know, the different messaging, because, you know, for a, a good number of our partners, just brand awareness is a significant reason for joining the OERU. Um, I mean, we have partners who are less interested in you know, providing free courses, but it's really their brand association. Uh, we do have a large international footprint, um, and you know, I would hazard a guess. I mean, I don't know how much it costs to raise international brand awareness, but uh, you'd be able to advise me. But I would hazard a guess that uh, you could spend double the membership fee of the OERU uh, partner membership, which is 4,000 US dollars, and you wouldn't come close to the international brand awareness you're getting through the network. But I don't know. I, I, I don't oversee marketing budgets. But we are, you know, we, we're getting some good international traction, and you know, just that brand association is valuable, I think, yeah. Sure, and I think sometimes you can strike it lucky with PR. Like, I've been thinking about... Um, Jacinda Ardern and our elections at the moment, and she's so focused on free education or you know making education available. That it could be that you happened to see the PR release that sparked um, a response because of the hot topic at the moment, and then that would be, I guess, a, a cost-free method by doing it. But you're right. How long's a piece of string? It would be a mammoth um, effort to do that. Uh, I guess paid-based brand awareness internationally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, that, that's been extremely valuable. Thank you very much. So, I mean, I think the next step is, well, this uh, marketing brief document. Just uh, by way of working together, we're in the process of migrating uh, our communication platforms to a more modern communication platform. We've been using uh, onlinegroups.net as, an uh, as an email list. But it's getting a little uh, long in the tooth, so to speak, and we're moving across to a, a more modern platform. 
uh, which is run by uh, or is powered by the Discourse open source software engine. So let me just at least just show you what it looks like. Um, and, you know, it's mobile friendly. There are a number of uh, very interesting features on this piece of software. Um, what I will do is I will set up a dedicated group for the, uh, the marketing group on the OERU community site. Um, and I'll then send out invites for you to join that group. So it's just background to know the reason I'm sending out those invites is that we're going to move from online groups onto this you know, more modern platform. And I think that's a good place to have the conversations um, that, that we're having. And um, then we can set up a document on Google Groups and then and take it from there. Does that make sense? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Fantastic. Any other uh, words of wisdom <laughs> as we try and uh, as we try and move this uh, philanthropic effort forward? Uh, if you would like, if it would be helpful in that um, conversation that you're going to set up on your software, I could modify one of our briefs just to, to strip out content and have headlines that we can start with. It, oh, um, that would be amazing. I, like, that would certainly help me because I, to be honest, I don't know where to start. Okay, I could do that, and then we um, there will be a shell, and then we can start to flush it out and change it up as we need. Oh, Lindsay, thanks a million. That would be a great help. And you know, in the true open source traditions, we're we're an open community, and you know, all comments, feedback, improvements are are most welcome. That's good. Any other questions? No? Fantastic. Look, to everyone, a big, big thank you from my desk for your time. Uh, I mean, this is going to help us tremendously in you know, achieving our mission, uh, which is really about um, making education more accessible for those who won't have the privilege of education. And... Um, and as I pointed out earlier on, it's, it's not a mutually exclusive model. I mean, I think there are significant opportunities, whether they are around social justice or new revenue streams for our individual partners in, in the network as well. Fantastic. So, Thank you. For, uh, folk in North America, in, in enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Uh, Thank you. We still have a working day here in New Zealand. Um, but <laughs> As I always say, we are in the fortunate position of seeing the future that's already happened, and your Thursday is going to be amazing. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. See you later. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone.